Welcome here to Talk FCB and welcome back to the first big video here on the channel after the arrival of Hansi Flick at Barca and what we're going to be doing today we're going to be taking another early look firstly into his staff at the club you know the changes that we could see the changes that we want to see within the club and we're also going to take a look our first look at how Hansi Flick's Barca could indeed shape up with emphasis on several key players it is all coming your way. Hopefully, these are going to be exciting times. So come on, and let's do this. Because today's video, guys, is coming to you courtesy of Manscaped right here today, where I come with a very important and special message, because in the very spirit of Hansi Flick's ideology, fast-paced, hard-working, efficient, cutting-edge, all about precision, well, Manscaped are here to give you all of that and more, away from the pitch in the form of the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra, because this will give you everything in terms of performance. You can certainly rely on this fantastic piece of kit. And with the lawnmower skin safe technology, you're also highly unlikely to see any silly mistakes either. That's something that Flick will be hoping to bring to Barca. And you can get 20% right now off your Manscaped order when you head over to their website. Just tap in the code TALKFCB. You've got yourself a nice saving and some top products there as well. So thank Thank you guys for all of that great support because if we do indeed get down to business and so let's talk about what Flick could bring to the club because I think what's really important here it's not just about the name Hansi Flick what he's achieved in the game you know what he can bring to Barca as a coach as a person but I think it's not just about him it's about what he can bring together with his staff with his ideas and importantly for me the change in culture at the club at Barca because I think we need here an overhaul not only of what we see on a match day what we see there in terms of a 90 minute performance but what Barca need more than anything is a real change in the day-to-day -day work in the everyday life there at Barca particularly on the training ground in terms there of the drills the preparation the work that we do before games and behind the scenes there looking at the physical side of things that is something that has plagued us over the past seasons that is what we're going to be looking for from Flynn. And in terms of his staff right now, what we are hearing is that Flick will arrive with two German assistant coaches by his side. It was reported last night that the second of those coaches will be Heiko Westermann. He will join there as the additional assistant coach. Apparently right now talks are ongoing because he's currently the assistant for the German under-19 team. And it's said there that one of Westermann's roles at the club will be liaising there with La Masia talents. You know, bridging the gap between La Masia and the first team players making that step up he's going to be in charge there of making sure that all goes smoothly but also crucially when it comes to Westerman there as the additional assistant coach it seems as though he's going to be in charge of translation we know that Hansi Flick right now he's learning Spanish he's on his way to, you know trying to become fluent with his players but he's not there yet and in the meantime Westerman there is somebody who can speak Spanish spent a bit of time there as a player at Real Betis he can speak Spanish very very well so he will act there as that translator when needed and certainly there he could have an important role but I think even more importantly then we have to talk about Julio Tus. He is going to become, apparently, Barca's new physical trainer in the coming season. Now, this is a really interesting choice because, first of all, it doesn't appear that he's been selected by Hansi Flick. It doesn't seem to be somebody here that directly Flick has said, OK, I'm bringing him in with me. This seems to be a decision from the club because, remember, even when Xavi wanted to stay, you know, when he was going to remain in charge of Barca, the club were trying to convince him to change the physical trainer. The club wanted to bring in their own man there and have somebody new at the club. And that man seems to be Julio Tus. And from what I've read about this man, he has a lot more experience, a huge amount there compared with what we've seen in this role at the club previously. You know, this guy has worked for Tottenham, for Inter Milan. He was also there, the physical trainer at Chelsea and Italy, where he worked under Antonio Conte. Now, that is a coach right there who absolutely 
absolutely demands the maximum in terms of the physical conditioning and he also worked at Juventus and he has even worked previously at Barca many years ago and that for me right there looks much more like the kind of CV you want from somebody taking a job at Barca. You know, you need experience. You need to have their experiences to draw from at the very top level because this is such a demanding job and you need to have top quality in this role. And what I like most actually about Tusier, from what I've read about him, he actually specializes. One of the areas there that he specializes in is actually injury resistance. He is somebody there who actively works on new methods, looks there very deep into how you can prevent injury problems, how you can really shield yourself against it. A lot of that with strength training and the like, and that is something that we need at Barca. If there is one thing we are looking for, it's battling against those injuries. That has been one of our biggest problems. And I think here, even if he hasn't been chosen by Flick, with the experience here and the proven track record of somebody like Toos, in addition then to what Hansi Flick himself and his staff can bring in terms of the training, in terms of the preparation, in terms of the work in the gym, you put all of that together... And surely we're on the right track. Surely there we are making a step in the right direction in terms of that physical approach and the preparation that we need to avoid injury problems. Let's have a season here where we can use our players, where we can use the full extent of our squad. That's what we need to bring. That is what must happen in the coming season. And hopefully... We're on the right track. Then, though, there is, of course, the work on the field. Let's make no mistake at all. That is still so, so important. What we see there from Flick and his ideas out on the pitch. And right now we are hearing that ideally Flick would like to set up in a 4-2-3-1 formation. That would be his go-to. That's something we've seen right throughout his coaching career. Some of his best moments, of course, come with that system. But we're also hearing that if needed, it can become a 4-3-3. You know, depending on the situation, it seems though Flick will be quite flexible. You know, he's not somebody there who's rigid, set in his ways. He is willing to adapt. He is willing to change depending on the kind of situation that we are faced with. And what I think is really important right now and really interesting in the media is that it is being reported that Flick sees three players in particular as the cornerstones there, the pillars of his project. And those players are number one, Ronald Araujo. Now that is a big one already because we have heard lots of rumours about Araujo's future. We've heard there from the PSG game, of course, what happened in all of that situation. We've heard that Araujo has become a bit down, a bit disappointed with what's happened, you know, the way that everything has played out since then. He has a contract offer on the table from Barca. He doesn't seem in a great rush to actually accept that or renew at this stage. He is another one of those players there whose contract expires in 2026. So certainly there, something's got to be done. You know, there's certainly an urgency about this deal and apparently Araujo will speak with Flick very very soon to understand his future to determine his future at the club but Flick would love him here he wants to have him here at the club and another one then it's Franco de Jong now this is another player in exactly the same situation as Araujo with that contract expiring in 2026 no movement yet on the renewal urgency within the club to get that resolved but he's another player that Flick would like to have and he's actually another one just like Balde, who Flick has already spoken to. Frankie has been at the club, of course, recovering from the injury problem that he has right now. So he's actually already spoken with Hansi Flick at the club. And it's going to be interesting to see, you know, if Frankie does indeed stay, what kind of role Flick has in store for him. He still wants another pivot. He wants a more defensive-minded player there, maybe alongside Frankie. But that is certainly one to keep an eye on. And the third player, it's Pedri. Now, this is somebody who, in two different ways... I am really hoping Flick can get the best out of him. Number one, physically. We've spoken about it already. If we can find a way to prevent injuries, to really help our players there, to be out on the field, to be available, that will help Pedri. He has missed way, way, way too much time with injury problems. But not only that, though, I think there's still more to come for him. When he is out on the field, when he is fit, when he is playing, Pedri can do more for me. He can do so much more. He can be a world beater. He's got the quality. He's got the potential there in midfield. And it needs to be brought out of him. So I hope there that Flick really sees Pedri as somebody who he can base his team around, who he can be the driving force, the driving beating heart of it there, because Pedri has so much more to give. But when you look there at those three players, you've got Arau, Frankie, Pedri. Now, two of those have been very much linked with exits away this summer in terms of raising money. The club might be tempted to cash in on them. 
But already now Flicky is saying, look, this is my trio. These are the players that I want, that I want to count on, that I want to base my project here at the club around. And if your new coach is, you know, already implying that, it's unlikely you can really sell them. I think the club here, they have to take into account what Flick wants, what Flick needs, the players that he really does want to trust in. And if it does happen to be Araujo, if it does happen to be Frankie there, I would certainly say that right now, it would look more like they will stay at the club. But those contract situations must be resolved. That is the club's priority right now. But I am just interested, guys, right here today. What you're making here of these early signs here. Obviously, it's very, very early days. Flick has only just got here. He himself is still learning more. He's still finding out more about the club, about the situation, about what we can even do this summer. But what is your immediate feeling right now after his arrival? What can he achieve here? And are you excited about the summer ahead? Please do let me know all of your feelings in the comments down below. Like I say, not too many days more away now for me. I'll be back with you regularly very, very soon indeed. But thank you indeed today for all of your great support. Big shout out as well to Manscaped. I will catch you soon. But until next time, yeah, as always, Vishka, Hilbasa. Uh -huh.